we want to look at, well, how do we, how does the spirit develop? And, and there's, there's a, uh, I found a wonderful tradition in, in five element oriental medicine uh, that, that grew out of the, the Taoist two element yin yang view of how the spirit develops. And the yin yang view is, well, we're born with an animal spirit, uh, that's the, the po, and we develop our heavenly spirit, our, you know, we have our earthly spirit that's, that's like a biological spirit, consciousness, and we develop a, a cloud consciousness from that, what they call the, the literal translation, translations, the white consciousness. Well, the substrate of that white consciousness, the animal spirit, the Poe of oriental medicine, is, appears to be what David Hudson patented in 1996 or 95 or 96. That's a white mineral form, uh, white powder. It was in his fields and on his farm, and he, he couldn't identify what it was. Sent it to laboratory after laboratory, and they say unknown, unknown. But it doesn't. Well, it doesn't you know dissolve in our solvents, and it doesn't go through our chromatograph, and you know it's like it doesn't burn. It's you know some kind of ash, I guess, but it's we don't know what. And it's all over his fields. What is it? If you go back to Egyptian culture, the, the word for what is it, and it's hard to pronounce, it's M-F-K-Z-T, something like that. <laughs> There's no vowels. <laughs> it means, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's this stuff that the spirit is made out of. Now, this is just in a mineral form, but when you put that in a biological context, I, it looks to me like one of the places it's going to go, the, the places it's going to go are where it has some kind of shield, some kind of Faraday cage. It likes to be in a sanctuary, likes to be protected from electromagnetic energies, likes you know, like peace and quiet. So it's gonna go inside ring structures, like the, the organic molecules that give us vitamins and smells and colors are usually phenolic ring structures where the electrons can zing, zing, zing around. And so they have these broad band absorption spectra where they'll, they'll just shield all those kind of energies from whatever is sitting in the, is the Lord of the Rings, <laughs> sitting in the middle of the rings. Uh, they'll sit at the ends of the DNA and at the ends of the microtubules and make those 10,000 times more conducting. And I think they're gonna sit, there's a type of condensate I just came across that would work like a gas, but in that, uh, in that structured water, uh, like at least at the surface and maybe, maybe throughout, I don't know, but the, the one I came across is, is a forms at surfaces, so at least at the surface, and maybe would tend to diffuse into the center, uh, probably would, um, but it's, which would be like a cloud of spirit in this pure energized water battery. Now it's these spirit minerals that in other, another even more <laughs> alternative, less known theory, is these from, from alchemists and people healing with these minerals, the experience is these are the substrate of consciousness. When I take this, it affects my consciousness. Uh, when it's carried by uh, a plant that's been, that's, that's a carrier of consciousness, say an entheogenic plant, uh, the consciousness of the person who's put their prayers and love and energy and care into that plant are identifiable in the spirit of the plant. Uh, so, you know, the spirit of a thing, well, if we go to the grocery store, there's very few spirits of things in there. There's some yogurt that still, you know, has some very chilled down bacteria, not very active. You can heat them up and they'll activate. They're still alive. Uh, there's some vegetables that were picked how long ago? How long does the spirit stay in a plant? What part of the spirit stays in how long? Where's even the research? There's, there's one study, one, there's some interesting studies. One study on humans goes back almost 100 years now. It's, nobody's ever funded re a replication of the study. Why? Well, there, it would be funded by a corporation. What are they going to make money out of? Funded by the government? What, how, what kind of power does it, does it give? It doesn't give centralized power to know that there's a soul. That's, we leave that to the church, and they, they're not funding that study. Maybe they should. Uh, <laughs> uh, the study looked at, at the moment of death, can we detect any change in the mass of a human being? And then they also did it with 
dogs. And in every case of a human being that they measured, they had to first you know, build the apparatus because you need a, a, a very sensitive and a very large scale so that they can't buy it from the catalog. Uh, and they found in every case when the human being passed away, there was an instantaneous, immediate, coherent change in weight, a loss in weight. Something left, all of a sudden, momentarily. Well, that sounds like the spirit body, the soul, the, you know, right? They're, they're, whatever that is that's up in the corner of the room looking down at them in near-death experiences, in, in, in well-studied uh, by a doctor in, in Holland now, did a pr the first prospective study, he said, well, I'm gonna, he's a heart surgeon, so I'm gonna study this on every heart attack patient who comes in and, and collect the data. So now we know 20% of the people who clinically die come back and say, I had this experience, I had a near-death experience. I, and, and cross cultures, those experiences are, are, have the same elements of a tunnel sometimes. He's got the percentage now. How, what percentage see a tunnel? And what percentage meet deceased relatives? And what percentage, you know, so we've got that data. I'll be putting that into the next book. Uh, or we can put in the graphics. Um, well, is there data on the, on the weight change? Yeah, the, the weight change, there's two phases. There's immediate, in every case, different amounts. And there's a, a slow over a course of 30 to 90 minutes. There's, there's a gradual, a wave-like. So there's, there's a, you know, a, a, a quantum shift and there's, and there's a wave that follows Life it. Life force dissipating. Yeah. Something, it's not... Most spirit. <laughs> whatever, whatever, it, whatever it is, is not accountable for by loss of fluids, by breath, by you know any other known process. So it's something that's leaving. It could be light. It could be it could be spirit minerals. I believe it's got to be both because the light is going to contain the information, the consciousness, and maybe that's the waveform because it's in a potentially waveform unless it's reflecting on itself where it quantizes quantums and we you know, can visualize, let's say if you close your eyes and, and visualize your right foot, see your right foot in your mind's eye. Do you begin to see your right foot in your mind's eye? And maybe even the leg that goes down to it in the periphery of that image. Mm -hmm. Anybody not see the right foot? Let's see it. You see it some? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you see any form within that? Do you see any color, any light, any can see the bones and muscles. Cool, cool. There have been people in near-death experience who were able to look at their body and see their arm and see like tubes of light that I visualize like like the blood vessels perhaps uh, going up the arm. Blood vessels would make sense. They, they contain a, a fluid-like medium, a plasma after which the physics term plasma comes after the biology term plasma because the physicists who named the plasma that they saw in the aurora borealis after the plasma in the blood because they move the same. They have a similar function, so they have a similar name. So there's literally a plasma-like fluid, what is plasma, in our cells, and in our blood, our, ve our veins, we're, we're arteries. Made of and those arteries and veins are twisted pairs of vessels. Well, that's what they observe in space plasma, is twisted pairs of vessels. Even between galaxies, there's these twisted pairs of, yeah, uh, we have the stars in our eyes at least, and maybe in our, in our cells. It's fascinating. Um, so what about this, this, this stuff called, what is it? What did this guy do after he found it? He has continued, he's still around doing, doing re interesting research with it. Uh, he basically found that there's, there's a whole group of about 11 or 12, uh, 13, somewhere about a dozen uh, minerals in the, in the transition metals, they're usually called, but these are non-metallic states, so let's call them the transition minerals. In that transition mineral group in the periodic table, uh, the part that's low down in the middle. So when you get to larger atoms, you start having this other 
series of orbitals, this other shell that gets filled, and, and that big, bigger shell, uh, those minerals can go into the state that he, that he documented and, and patented that's similar to a condensate, like similar to a very low temperature mineral that becomes superconductive, super, super fluid, but this exists at room temperature, body temperature. It's called a high spin state, where the nucleus is, has higher energy and it's spinning like at, at a, a higher spin rate. And, and, and so it creates, uh, it, it shifts the electron orbitals. It, it's like the nucleus takes up some of those, I've never seen it this way, this makes sense. The, the nucleus is in a high spin, so it begins to take up a bigger space uh, with its field. Okay, and, and that then means that the inner orbitals for the electrons are not available. And the electrons are all in outer orbitals because the, the size of the field of the mineral in this state is about five times the size of its state as a metal. So it's, it's this big energy. And yet, it's very ghost-like, it's spirit-like because it, it's super fluid, it can just flow. If you have it in a metal container, it can just tunnel out through the container. It doesn't have, it, or it can go up and over the top. Amazing. Uh, it, it'll, it'll move apparently of its own accord. It it's, uh, has its own consciousness. You know, in, in ancient, ancient traditions of alchemy, it's, it's the philosopher's stone. It's that which the alchemist creates as it creates the alchemist, because you're working with this energy that's the energy of consciousness, and there's no way you're doing that without affecting your consciousness. And and the ultimate goal is to get it to a point where it's where it's purified and of a high energy state where it's totally it's 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 an antenna for God. It's literally like the descriptions, the rare descriptions of of uh, the, the the book of the law that, that was given to Moses. There's there's one of the two tablets in in Ethiopian tradition is held in the church there. They describe it as being the whole ark, but they have this, the description would fit an ark that held the, at least one of the books of the law that would have been in the ark, the, the large ark. But it, it's, it's this, would be the, the, uh, this white powder, perhaps gold in this case, but one of those 12 minerals, he, heated, melted into a, a glass, annealed into a glass. Glass is a, is a super cold liquid. It's another state of matter. It's a liquid like a window pane of glass or glass eyeglasses are a liquid, but it's a liquid that's a super cold liquid. We call it a glass because on our time frame we don't see it flowing. Over historic time, wind, window, windows will flow and the bottom will be thicker than the top. Uh, so we can say that's a, a bit of a different state of matter. Just like this water that's on the inside and outside the cell in a biologically structured, energized water is the same structure that water has to go through to make ice. Just that layer before it's ice is structured water and then it, then it expands into ice. And the next layer forms and expands into ice and when the ice melts it forms structured water and then the water comes apart into separate atoms, uh, separate molecules. We didn't know this. I didn't know this until a couple months ago. Uh, pieces coming together as I'm, I'm putting together this uh, theory of everything. So in this, um, these different stages, if someone is um, getting acquainted with your model, what is the first important thing to know, maybe, or understand? First, the, the, if we step back from the model and say, well, why is it important? That's what we need to understand is that if I'm looking at my body as something that's falling apart because of time, we call it aging, mm -hmm. then I will find out how that's true. If I believe that this body is made to be able to completely regenerate itself, not only to a level of past perfection or approximation to perfection that, that it's achieved in the past, but to actually overcome any acquired defects from injury, from toxicity, any damage can potentially be healed. There's, there's a study on DNA 
that shows that even if we were to lose all of our DNA, if we have a coherent substance that has an image of that DNA in it, like the spirit body, that it can potentially regenerate the DNA. The study was uh, uh, in vitro, in glass, DNA molecule, uh, an image put into the glass using laser, uh, and then after the DNA was taken out, putting in a, a, a cross laser beam to then reactivate that image, that spatial image of the DNA in the fluid, and reintroducing the, the basic components that build DNA. And it formed itself into DNA, the same DNA that had been there. So if the spirit body is superconducting and therefore has perfect memory, it knows exactly what our genetics are. and explains why, like a friend of mine who passed away as a child and, and came to me in spirit right after she passed, wasn't a child anymore and didn't have any of the damage of the disease that she'd suffered from for her, you know, most of her short life. She was perfectly adult, fully formed, you know, not aged, and that's how most saints appear. Not always. They can appear as a child. You know, Jesus will come appear as a, appearing as a child, or will come appearing as you know, 33 with his wounds, or, or any way, you know, many different ways. But most appearances by saints will be as like a 33-year-old uh, equivalent. You know, sort of the perfect age, but without defects that they might have had in, in life. Thank you, Dr. Glenn. I'm going to be excited to hear more about this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Okay.